This is Larry Pollock uh, coming to you from Underground Performance Gym, Ventura, California. Uh, today we're going to talk about a sort of a taboo subject. Uh, this is a subject that uh, I, it's not my favorite subject to talk about, but I know it's something that a lot of people uh, want to hear about, and that is performance enhancing drugs and how they relate to how they work and how they relate to uh, bodybuilding, powerlifting. Uh, any kind of uh, performance enhancing in, in sports in general. This is a topic that um, this is going to take a lot of videos to cover all of it, obviously, because there's a ton of information. Um, but I want to address just some basic principles of uh, anabolic steroids, how they work. Um, I don't, I'm not going to get into the morality of whether you should or shouldn't take them. That's a personal choice that uh, you can decide. Obviously, um, if you want to be natural and stay natural i respect that completely i i know a lot of natural competitors that do very well without taking anything at all um but other people they want to take it to another level um and as far as the health concerns go uh, i'll i'll touch on that as well now first of all i want to i want to talk about how anabolics work basically steroids are derivative of testosterone. I know this is pretty basic for most people, but all steroids are derivative of testosterone. And then we have other things like growth hormone and peptides and other, other compounds that work accelerate with, with steroids and, and or not. But I'm going to talk about anabolic steroids first. So what anabolic steroids do is create a positive nitrogen balance, which prevents uh, catabolism. Catabolism is breaking down of the muscle. Anabolism is building muscle. So the word anabolic means to build muscle. Catabolic means to break down muscle. Okay? So why, why would someone take steroids? Well, they're used in medical uh, purposes for people with things like wasting disease, uh, injuries like severe burns, uh, anywhere where the, the body is damaged to help increase healing and speed up recovery. Now, there's been case studies that proved that people can increase muscle mass and um, nitrogen retention with taking steroids and testosterone or testosterone, which is both the same thing, uh, without doing any kind of resistance training. Um, this is true. However, let me clarify this. To a limited extent, it works on things like, let's say a person is uh, severely, has wasting disease from uh, something like HIV and they're severely catabolic. Their body's in a catabolic state. So they're malnourished. They're not a absorbing and digesting and processing food and they're not uh, putting on muscle because they're they're malnourished so in this case taking a anabolic steroid is going to help them add muscle it's not going to turn them into a bodybuilder it's not going to increase muscle mass over what would necessarily be what they would normally have what we're doing is taking somebody that's down here and bringing them back to normal by taking the anabolics, which allows them to utilize their protein and food and, and to hold on to the muscle mass that they lost because of this wasting. It's not, it's not going to increase their muscle mass above and beyond. So in other words, in order for the anabolic steroids to work, uh, to build muscle, there has to be a training stimulus. You can't sit on the couch eating tons of calories, take steroids, and build muscle. It doesn't work like that. You're just going to get fat, no matter how many steroids you take. In order for steroids to work, there has to be 
a process where you're breaking down the muscle and then it needs to recover from the training and then there's an adaptive response which comes from the training and what the steroids will do is allow you to have a positive nitrogen balance so that your body can utilize protein and, and carbohydrates to help facilitate healing faster. That's all it does. So in other words, the training is what's building the muscle. It's not the steroids building the muscle. Now you say, well, yeah, but people that don't take steroids, they don't build muscle as fast. That's not necessarily, well, that is true to an extent, but I've seen lots of natural uh, power lifters that get pretty big and strong and they've never taken a steroid in their life. And I know it's true because I'm, I've run powerlifting meets and I've drug tested these people and they're not taking anything. Uh, generally, they're eating a huge surplus of calories. They're, for the most part, overweight uh, because of the, all the food they're eating. So their body is in an anabolic state already just from all the food that they're eating. Food is the most anabolic substance that there is. Without food, you know, none, the steroids aren't going to work. The training's not going to work. Nothing's going to work. So it's a three-stage process process you need all three things you need the training to stimulate the growth you need the food the nutrients which are going to give you the building blocks to repair and then the steroids are going to send the signal to the body to cause this uh, increase in nitrogen balance so that you heal faster okay so this is why high-intensity training obviously works really well, um, regardless of whether you're taking uh, anabolics or not. But especially when you're taking anabolics, it's necessary for the training to be even more intense than it would otherwise, because otherwise you're not really getting the benefit of the steroids. So in other words, if you let's say you take anabolic steroids, but your training is, you know, subpar it's not very intense where well, you're not really going to get the benefit the full benefit of you that you would taking the steroids as if you really trained a high intensity training and did a, a lot of damage to the muscle severely breaking it down during the training session so now that your body has a, a reason to adapt and it needs the anabolics to force that growth to happen so it's not and People put too much emphasis on the drugs instead of the training and nutrition. If, if the training and nutrition are not on point, the drugs aren't going to do much. Okay. Now, that being said, um, there's different ideas about, you know, how much drugs do you need? Um, do more drugs are better? And, you know, I just recently did a video on a good friend of mine, Boston Lloyd, who passed away at a young age, um, abusing uh, not only anabolics, but, you know, all kinds of drugs. And I, I firmly believe that, you know, his abuse of these compounds are, would contribute to his early demise. I have, I have no doubt about that. Um, but here's a guy that um, he really didn't train that hard, and he tried to depend on drugs to do it. And obviously, he didn't get the results he probably could have if he was better. I, I think he did pretty de decent with his nutrition. But if he was better at the training, he probably would have got more out of the drugs. Now, what he did was he took a lot of drugs, th thinking that the, dose, the higher the dosage, the you know better the response. I'm going to say that this is true only to an extent. So let me explain that. So you break down muscle tissue through training. And the harder the training, the more you break down the muscle tissue, the more stimulus that you've uh, created, the more reason there is for growth, the more food that you take in and nutrients that you take in. And then you take the anabolics on top of that, you're gonna, it's gonna allow you to recover from the training. Now, how much anabolics does it take? Well, first of all, um, there's a saying that 
your body only understands milligrams, and this is true, but you can only utilize a certain amount of drugs, okay, based on your genetics and also just, you know, your body can only grow so fast. So in other words, uh, there becomes a situation where um, taking more is not going to necessarily give you better results and there, it, it becomes a point of diminishing returns. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. Let's say you've created a stimulus uh, that you've really, you've really done a lot of damage to the muscle. Now you're giving it the nutrients it needs to recover. And it takes a certain amount of drugs to allow you to optimally recover from that training and maybe add a little bit more muscle. Once you reach that threshold of the amount of drugs that it takes to recover from the training um, and put a little bit, add a little bit more new muscle on, that's about as far as it's going to go. In other words, if you add double the drugs on it, you're not going to get double the results. It, it, does, it just doesn't work like that. So in order, if you want, to, if you want longevity, which uh, is what I preach, is you want longevity, you want to actually be around for a while, and actually be able to do this like I have for over 40 years, uh, you don't want to take excessive amounts of things that aren't necessarily going to help you uh, long-term build muscle and also are going to be detrimental to your health. So in other words, for example, I'll tell you myself uh, what I do and I'll tell you what I've done in the past. When I was younger, I took a little bit higher dosages and I took harsher compounds, things like Tremblone. Today, all I take is uh, two, two compounds. I take my regular prescription testosterone and I take something called nandrolone phenylpropanate, which is um, basically the short acting version of decadurabolin. And I, these are the two compounds I use and I use these two compounds specifically, well, obviously, testosterone for the hormone replacement, and of course, it does have an anabolic effect, and I'm running about 250 milligrams a week of testosterone, and I'm running 200 milligrams a week of NPP, uh, broken up into four, four times a week, 50 milligrams at a time, and I also break up my testosterone in, in four separate shots, okay? So, um, and I'll get into why I do this. This is a dosage that I found is optimal for me at my stage in life where I can maintain my muscle mass and maybe get a little bit stronger um, without, hopefully without creating any health risks, without damaging my, messing up my lipids, without uh, messing up my liver, kidneys, and all this other stuff. Now, I have actually tried taking higher dosages at different times, and what I found is I didn't necessarily grow more. Actually, I found for myself, sometimes I grow less. I didn't recover as well. Because when you overload your body with compounds that it just can't use, um, you're, you're, just, it's, you're creating a sick uh, body. In other words, a healthy body is going to recover better and it's, and it's going to be optimal for, from training than something that's not healthy. And when you, go, when you stress out your body by putting too much hormones in there, then you're, you just can't use the hormones up. And so like at my age and the amount of muscle mass I'm carrying, and even as training as hard as I can, I, that's, a, that's enough anabolics for me to recover optimally and to be able to do what I, what I need to do in the gym. And I found that this, this works. And I found taking extra doesn't do anything extra for me. Now, I have known people that have taken large dosages. And will taking large dosages work more than less dosages? And the answer to that is yes, but. Yes, it will, but only for a short period of time. In other words, if you add in a large amount of anabolics, it's going to have an anabolic effect 
and it might push you to a little bit higher level of being able to add muscle mass. But your body will quickly adapt to whatever dosage you're taking. And the way it does it is when your, your androgens are too high, your body will start converting those androgens to estrogen and to DHT and to try to, and try to eliminate it because it doesn't want that many androgens in your system. So it actually starts working against you. So yes, you, you, you increase the dosage, you will get a spike, a short spike and in increase in muscle gains for a period of time, but then your body's gonna figure out that uh, this is more androgens than I want in my system and it'll, it'll basically back off and you'll start having side effects that you don't wanna have necessarily and you're not gonna have any additional growth beyond after a few weeks. Now, I, I do know a world champion powerlifter who I trained with for many years, and we added up everything that he took. And this guy was known to take, you know, I actually know that he took a lot of, a lot of uh, milligrams, actually grams of, of drugs. And the week before he broke a raw record in the, I'm not going to say any more about that because it would be too easy to figure out who he is. That's his personal information. But anyways, he, he brought, broke a raw record in powerlifting. And the week before, we added up everything he took. And he took 10 grams that week. And I literally sat down, and I know this was for real because I supplied it to him. And, we, and I was training with him. And we sat down and added it all up. And I was actually blown away by that he, a human being could take 10 grams of anabolics in a week. Did it work? Well, obviously it worked. He broke a raw record. He was massive. I mean, probably one of the largest individuals just like that I've ever seen. Not necessarily like bodybuilding. He was a power lifter, so he's not aesthetically pleasing or anything, but he was built like a refrigerator. And he was this thick and this wide, so you can just imagine. Now, here's the thing. He did this for the week before the competition. He didn't do this for a month before the competition or several months before the competition, and he didn't do it all year long. He did this for a week, and he built up to that dosage over a period of months, uh, built, working up to the competition, and then as soon as the competition was over, he went completely off of everything to clean out his body. Am I recommending this? Um, no. I'm not recommending this. I'm just telling you this is something I know that I know someone personally has done this and I, I, I know it worked. The problem we have is some people take this and they'll be like, okay, well, this guy took 10 grams in a week and he broke a world record. Well, I'll just take 10 grams every week and I'll continue to break world records. No, you won't. What will happen is you'll kill yourself like Boston Lloyd did. Your body, you know, your body can handle a lot. You can go out and get drunk uh, and drink a lot of alcohol and get completely inebriated to where you pass out drunk and it won't kill you. But if you do it all the time, several times a week for years at a time, you'll basically destroy your liver and it will kill you. So your body can take a lot of abuse for a, for a short period of time. But you can't do this to yourself all the time because you're going to have you're going to have the uh, problems in in the maybe not immediately but eventually you're going to run into problems if you do this. So if you want to have longevity, uh, which should should be the goal of, uh, I, it, in my opinion, I think it's just smart. You want to use the minimum dosage necessary or possible to get the maximum result. So in other words, no, it's not how much can I take, it's how little can I take and make as much progress I can. And instead of depending on the drugs for your progress, you want to focus more on your training and nutrition. And this is uh, where uh, I think things changed. See, I started back in the 80s. And when I started back in the 80s, the emphasis was on training and nutrition. 
And yes, we have the same anabolics, the same ones that are we used today, we used back then. The difference was it wasn't talked about that much. In other words, you, you couldn't watch a YouTube video and learn about it. There was no such thing. They didn't talk about it in the magazines. And it was very hush-hush even in the gym. I mean, you had to know somebody and you had to get information. You know, there was very limited information. And the dosages that people took were way lower than what people take today uh, just because, you know, what we took back then we thought was a lot. And I think over time what happened is basically it, and as in the 90s things progressed and people started taking higher dosages and they started getting bigger and then it got to a point where you know it got it got out of control and then you had situations where you know people are taking massive dosages and they're not and they're just getting sick and having problems from it so i'm i'm basically from the old school of thinking is like you know back when i started uh you know if you took 500 milligrams a week of everything combined you know we thought that was a lot and you know people made really good progress doing that and uh you know people will say well uh, bodybuilders are bigger today and powerlifters are stronger today than they were back when yes to an ex to an extent i'm going to tell you like this uh it, the advances in training and nutrition have been more than I think in the drugs because the drugs are like I said they're the same drugs we had the same drugs back then as you do today there's nothing new there's no, no new secret drugs yeah there's been some like things that have come out of the woodwork but basically the basic compounds that worked back then are what people use today and they still work okay so there's no magic formula there's no magic drug cycle that that all of a sudden does this however um like i said over time people increase the dosages and i think that worked like i said to up to a point now let's say that first of all let me back up and talk about uh, genetics for a minute there's what we call a hyper responder a hyper responder is somebody that is they build muscle quickly they respond to stimulus of training and they are also very responsive to drugs. And what that means is someone like a Lee Priest can take even a, a, a small dose of drugs and get way better results than an, a regular person taking the same amount or more drugs because he's a hyper responder. He just builds muscle easily because of his genetics. So you being uh, not necessarily a hyper responder and not necessarily having world-class genetics, you're not going to compensate for your lack of genetics by taking more drugs to get you to another level. It doesn't work like that. Now, you can train harder and that will help you get to another level, but take, taking more drugs is not going to make it make up for your lack of genetics. So in other words, if if you're, I, I believe I maxed out my genetic potential. And I really do believe that because I trained very hard for a long time. Um, I believe I ran drugs uh, probably in the dosages uh, that were maximal to get results. And I've tried different amounts at different times. And like I said, I figured out, you know, how, how little I could take and still grow. And at my peak, I was... Uh, about between 240 and 250 pounds. That's the biggest I could ever get. And I was fairly lean. And let me tell you, my right now I'm about 215. I stay between 215, 220. But it, um, between 240 and 250, I was I was pretty uh, good sized bodybuilder. And I was able to lift very heavy weights. I squatted 820 pounds. I did a 550 pound bench press. So. The, I, I believe that I, I was able to max out my genetic potential. Um, I don't think I ever could, I didn't have the genetics to be a 300 pound bodybuilder, uh, no matter what I did, no matter how many drugs I took, no matter how much food I ate, no matter what I did, my body was not gonna be a 300 pound bodybuilder. And, and you know, I'm five foot seven, and I think 
at my tallest, I was like five, eight and a half. I've actually shrunk over years from just probably having all that heavy weight on my back. It's compressed my spine. Um, but with my bone, my frame and my bone structure, me carrying between 240 and 250 pounds, it was a lot of weight. Now, if, by the way, if you want to compare that to somebody, Phil Heath, which was a, a seven-time Mr. Olympia, he competed at, uh, between around 240 pounds, between 240 and 250, and he's a seven-time Olympia winner. So he wasn't a 300-pound mass monster either, uh, but 250 pounds on or 40 pounds on his body uh, looked like 300 pounds on somebody else's body. So he obviously beat people that you know were bigger structurally. Because, you know, he has small joints and, and round muscle bellies. And that, that's a big person at, at his structure. So, um, again, I, I believe I did max out my genetic potential as far as being able to put on muscle. Um, also, I think I pushed it to the point at my best for bodybuilding, I competed at 225 pounds. Uh, when I was 250 pounds, um, I was bigger but I obviously it wasn't uh, structurally as pleasing as, as at 225 pounds because my waist also got bigger um, from just basically all different compounds, and I'll get into that later. So in other words, whatever your genetic potential is, you're only going to be able to use a certain amount of drugs to get to that level. So then the question becomes, well, how do you know how much drugs I can take and what is what is the amount that I need to take? And the answer is you need to figure that out over time because it's going to be different for every person. So ideally, you want to start with the minimum amount possible and slowly over time, and I'm, when I say over time, I'm talking years, not weeks, not months, over years, see if you increase the dosages, if you get any better results from it. And I say increase the dosage by increasing it by small amounts. My first cycle ever that I did, I was 16 years old. Now, some people might argue that's too young to start taking steroids. And probably in hindsight, it was. But I, you know, I, I, I had already been training really hard for four years. So I had four years of natural training under my belt before I took a steroid, even though I was 16 years old. And I was training hard for those four years. My first cycle ever, I took Anivar, which is considered the most mild anabolic compound there is. And at that time, they came from a company called Cyril, and they were two milligrams uh, per tablet. And I took three of those a day. For, and I had one bottle with 100 tablets. I took three a day for 33 days till I ran out of them. And so I was taking six milligrams of Anivar a day. And that first cycle, I put on a substantial amount of size and strength because my body was super responsive because I had never taken anything in my life. Probably also the fact that I was 16 years old. So I just got great results from just a little tiny bit. And then over time, I tried different compounds, um, Tremblone and other things. And what I found is some of the harsher compounds, yes, I did get stronger on them, um, but I also came with uh, negative things like injuries, um, which I'll get into in another video. But basically what I found for myself is uh, the compounds that I like the most, testosterone for a man, uh, first of all, for women, I don't think you need testosterone at all. If you're taking anabolics, you're already getting the androgens out of that. Men, men need testosterone for obviously masculine characteristics you know, if that's something that you're concerned about. Um, and you just need a, only a certain amount of testosterone. You don't need more. You know, some people say, you know, take a gram of testosterone a week. I don't really think you need a gram of testosterone. You need as much testosterone as you need to, to, to get what you are going to out of the testosterone. And then the rest you can get out of the anabolics with a lot less side effects. Um, now, the other compound that I like is nandrolone. And... Nandrolone, uh, the reason I like Nandrolone is because Nandrolone, uh, the chemical itself, uh, binds to the cortisol, cortisol receptor. 
And what this means, it's a natural anti-inflammatory. So why is this important? Well, I'll tell you why. The, when I'm training high intensity training, it's really in, important that my joints are healthy and I don't injure myself. And I found my Nandrolone allows me to maintain a positive nitrogen balance. I recover quickly, but even more importantly, my joints are not hurting. You know, I don't have aches and pains constantly. Okay, so it, it really does work like that. And if you want to train heavy for long periods of time, I'm talking years, you want to do everything you can to avoid injuries because injuries are will set you back, majorly set you back. So these two compounds alone are enough for me to be able to train as hard as I want and and still recover. Now, are there other compounds that work and are going to get a little bit better results? Uh, yes, depending on your stage of training. Um, there's a drug called Tremblone, which is very popular because it's 10 times more androgenic than testosterone and it's super anabolic. I don't know if it's 10 times more anabolic, but it's very anabolic. And, it, and so it's the harshest compound you can take and it's the strongest compound you can take. Uh, it's also the one compound that I've found caused me to have the most injuries. And the reason I believe that is, is because um, because of the high androgen component, it allows you to push your levels of intensity just a little bit farther than maybe your body was really can do it. So in other words, your mind-muscle connection is just better with, with the uh, Tremblone. So let's say, and it also works very quickly, it's like an instant thing. So let's say uh, my max on a particular lift is 500 pounds for 10 reps. And then I take Tremblone the day before or the day of. And it, it, if you take the acetate version, it, it kicks in instantly. I might be lifting 550 pounds for those 10 reps. Well, guess what? Yes, I'm lifting an extra 50 pounds, but that extra 50 pounds is what's going to cause me to have an injury. Because really, I'm not really that strong. Uh, my muscles aren't that strong. My tendons aren't that strong. It's just that I'm able to generate a little bit more force mentally. So now I'm pushing to a level beyond what my body can do. And I can tell you uh, every major injury that I've ever had, there was Tremblone involved in it. So what I found is, um, will Tremblone give you faster results than Andrelone? Yes. Um, but over time, I'm saying in the long run, I can get just as big and strong with an androlone. It's just going to take a little bit longer, and I'm not going to have the same intensity. Now, if I was going to use Tremblone, I would use it at a much lower dosage than people use it at because it is so strong. So typically, people will take 300, 500 milligrams of, milligrams of Tremblone a week, um, and that's just a standard protocol that like you hear people do. Some people take way more than that, which I think is just completely nuts. Um, but I, I personally think you could probably get uh, optimal results taking as little as, you know, 20 to 25 m milligrams of Tremblone because it's so strong. If you took that, you know, four times a week prior to a training session, I think you'd probably get just as much out of it as you would if you took 50 milligrams. In other words, you're not going to get that much more out of it as far as the, the gross stimulus and the training intensity is going to be there anyways. Um, do, I rec do I ever think there's a time to take Tremblone? Yes. And the only time I, I ever recommend somebody taking it is pre-contest, like literally the last month before a contest because it does allow you to maintain a positive nitrogen balance, train very hard, when you're severely calorie deprived and um, you're not getting the maximum nutrients, you're still able to maintain and even gain strength throughout a contest prep. Uh, off season, when you're taking in plenty of calories and nutrients, I don't think you need it. Um, other compounds are orals and there's 
uh, positive and negative things with orals. Um, the positive with orals is it's in and out of you fast. In other words, you take it and the half-life is like, say, six hours. So if you take it and it's working for six hours and it's out of you, the downside of it is there 17 alkylated, which means it has to be processed through your liver, which is very hard on your liver. So if you take orals uh, on a regular basis, you're putting a lot of extra strain on your liver that you know doesn't need to be there. You can take an injectable and not having that the strain on your liver. Um, now, why would I ever use orals? Well, I'll tell you why I like it. I, I believe that um, you want to have the anabolic effect. You know, everything works together. It's synergistic. Your training, your nutrition, the anabolics, so everything you're doing works together. And so you, you want the, to have optimal anabolism when you're training and recovering from that workout. So let's say I take an oral an hour before I do my high intensity training session. Well, now I'm gonna have a, a heightened anabolic response for six to eight hours uh, till the half-life, and actually till the whole thing's out of my system for probably 24 hours. So now I'm basically using that anabolic stimulus or the, the steroid itself to help me train harder and recover from my training and then it's out of my system by the next day so the way i would use an oral is i would take it um, like i said an hour before training and my body is using that up for training now by the way dosages i don't need a whole lot of it i just need enough to uh, actually help my training and it does help you increase your training intensity and then it helps you recover after the training. And, you know, obviously, you know, you're going to get, you're going to be recovering for the whole week. That being said, the major damage that you're doing, you can recover probably as much as 50% in the first 24 to 48 hours after the training. This is somebody, if you're experienced at training, and you've been training a long time and your body's used to training. So in other words, I train legs on Saturday, for example. Sunday, I'm, well, immediately after training, I'm wrecked. I can barely walk. Sunday, I'm hurting really bad. Monday, I'm a little sore, but guess what? I'm, I'm not nearly as bad as I was on Sunday because I've, I've slept, I've ate, I've recovered, I've hydrated, and I'm almost recovered. Now, the growth is not taking place probably until you know the a few days after all that healing has happened but that initial damage that i've done i'm able to recover most of that in the first 48 hours after the training session and then of course you know in the next few days i'm recovering fully and maybe a little bit of growth will occur so i want that anabolic effect to be working you know while while i'm doing the training session um that's another reason why I, I use shorter acting compounds. I, this is my personal philosophy. Now, other people will disagree. Uh, I prefer shorter acting compounds like nandrolone phenylpropanate, uh, testosterone propanate um, versus longer acting compounds like decadurabolin or uh, testosterone cypionate, for example. <clears throat> the reason is, uh, again, I'll take the dosage uh, on my training day before my training session, you know, several hours before, and now I'm, it's going to peak. Uh, let's say I take it in the morning. It's going to peak about 12 hours later, which is probably around the time that I'm training and, and recovering from that training session. That's when I'm going to get the peak blood levels before it starts to break down in the half-life. So, for example, nanolophenylpropanate, the half-life is 48 hours. So, for those first 48 hours, my, my anabolic, uh, the anabolic process that I'm going to get from that is going to be up during that workout and recovery time. So, that's when I want it to be working. Um, what I think what happens with longer-acting compounds, and well, I know this happens because I can prove it from blood work, 
is they build up in your system over time. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. The half-life on a Decadurabolin is like nine days, and a half-life on testosterone recipient is about seven days. So what happens is, let's say you take a, a shot twice a week, okay, and you're taking uh, 300 milligrams a week. Well, what will happen is that half-life will break down, and then you take another shot, and over time, it compounds upon itself. And your blood levels will slowly but steadily increase over time. So after a period of weeks, uh, your blood levels of the amount of, of compound that's floating around in your blood all week long is much higher than it would be if you took in fast acting compounds that are in and out of your system quickly. And why do I not want those higher blood levels? Well, I'll tell you why I don't want them. Because when that stuff is floating around in your system and you're not using it up for training, the extra, the extra antigens, the extra compound, your body has to do something with it. It has to eliminate it. So it's going to get converted to estrogen. It's going to get converted to dehydrotestosterone. With nandrolone, it's going to get converted to... Um, not estrogen, but progesterone. It's going to be converted progesterone, and so then a lot of people, uh, a lot of people don't like nandrolone because progesterone can have a negative effect on libido and erectile it cause erectile dysfunction if your progesterone is too high, and this is a real thing. Um, people call it deca dick, where their progesterone is too high. They can take too much nandrolone, and I can tell you, I believe this really happens when the overall levels of nandrolone get too high in your blood stream, and so your body starts converting it to a lot of progesterone your progesterone gets too high and then you're starting to run into those problems well with npp your blood levels you know i take 50 milligrams four times a week uh on only on my training days so my blood levels are not even though I'm getting that spike uh, for the day of, of the anabolic effect and the cortisol blocking effect and everything else, it my, my, I'm not getting a whole lot of conversion to progesterone as I, as I would with a longer acting compound. And the same with the testosterone. If I'm taking the faster acting, I'm not getting as much conversion, so I'm not going to have the same side effects. So personally, I like faster acting compounds. They're in and out of your system quickly. They do the job and you're not raising your blood levels higher than they need to be. This is just my own philosophy of doing things. I know a lot of people are gonna disagree. They have their own ways of doing things. Now, uh, one thing, uh, reason people like longer acting compounds is because you have to take less injections. And I totally understand that. After 40 years of doing this, I really don't like taking shots. I, I just actually hate taking shots. And back in the day when we first started, we were told that it has to go deep in the muscle. So you have to use a 22 gauge, inch and a half needle. And let me just tell you what that does. Poking yourself with that 22 gauge, inch and a half needle creates damage and scar tissue in the muscle. And over time, if you keep poking the same place, and there's only so many places you can poke yourself with it, you'll create a lot of scar tissue from sticking those big needles in you. So what I do now is I use an insulin syringe and I use 50 milligrams of NPP, which is a half a mil. And then I use another um, 60 milligrams of testosterone and that's actually i'm using a higher dosage of testosterone so that's about a quarter of a mil so that's three quarters of a mil in an insulin syringe with a half inch needle and i can put that in my shoulder my tricep and i'm creating very little scar tissue it's not a big painful injection and i can just do it the day of a workout and it's not a big deal um that's what i what i personally do now some people like 
they would rather take a big shot all at once and take it once a week. Um, if you take a shot once a week, even if it's long acting compound, what's going to happen is it's going to spike and you're going to get a peak within the first 24 hours. So that long acting compound is going to peak in 24 hours and then it's going to start decreasing. And by midweek, you're going to be at about half life and then it's going to keep going down. By the end of the week, your blood levels are low. So even if you're taking a long acting compound, you're going to want to take at least twice a week. Uh, just to keep blood level somewhat steady and again when you do that twice a week then it's going to compound on top of itself and you're going to end up with higher blood levels in the long run so uh, this is my philosophy of of what i've learned and from many years of trying all different types of compounds dosages and things like that um my pre oh uh, my orals prior to workout I use Anovar 25 milligrams and Turnabal 25 milligrams. Uh, why these two? I found they work synergistically. They work together. They do real well. And even though I know orals are harder on the liver, I'm only taking it four times a week, right before my workout. Literally, like as I'm getting ready to train, I'll take those two things. So now I'm getting the maximum effect of them. I'm using them up during the workout, and I'm. Not, I'm not taking orals like some people take, they want to maintain their blood level. So they're taking orals three times a day or twice a day all week long. I think this is when you're going to run into problems. But because I only take it four times a week right before the workout, I'm getting a little boost from it. It's helping my recovery. And then it's in and out of my system, like you said, in 12 hours and, I'm, and it's out. It's done. So um, I think I've covered a good amount of material. Of course, there's a lot of lot more we're going to get into. Uh, we have peptides, uh, growth hormone, all of these things. And I'm going to save these for other videos because, uh, again, there's a lot, a lot of more material we can cover. And I think I gave you quite a bit today. So, um, again, uh, please uh, answer, post any questions you have. And so we can do follow-up videos answering any questions. I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. Um, whatever responses, critiques, whatever you want to say, I'll, I'll respond to that. Um, don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you like it so it can keep providing with more content and uh, we'll keep bringing it to you. So this is Larry Pollock from Underground Performance Gym, Ventura, California, with a hardcore training center in Ventura. You can go on our website, get a free seven day pass. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video so we can keep bringing you more content in the future.